All right, so my name is Rob Sherwood. I'm CTO at Big Switch Networks. Um, now we're going to review a little bit about our other product before I get to some of the new updates from the version 3.5. Uh, it's also useful to, to step back and say, actually, we're talking about the same switch hardware for both products. And so as I talk willy-nilly about, oh, yeah, you could throw in a couple extra switches here for inline. You could have a couple of those for, for monitoring for, for out of band. It's also the same switches that you can use in your proper data center for the production traffic. And it's really where that's where the other tool comes in. So our, our big cloud fabric product, um, as we've talked about in a bunch of network field days, is a data center leaf spine fabric. Um, much like we talked about previously, we have a pair of centralized controllers which manages the software. Uh, so it manages the uh, data center production switches in a leaf spine fabric both the physical switches as well as the virtual switches. So we have a virtual switch which extends that functionality uh, optionally. Um, we do integration with OpenStack. We do integration with VMware. We're also kind of a, a standard um, physical data center switch. So if you just want to deploy something bare metal like Hadoop or IP storage or something like that, of course, we support that as well. Um, how does this plug into a larger data center? So if you imagine you've got a, some sort of uh, routed core, some set of egress routers to the outside world, you've got some legacy gear on the side, you drop our controller leaf spine pair in as a pod connecting as you deploy more projects. If you run out of ports here, you deploy another one of these. It's, it's exactly that same big switch metaphor. What do you do when you run out of ports? You buy another switch. Um, three big use cases that uh, we, our customers have been pushing us towards. First is OpenStack. Um, that is you know, people trying to replicate the Amazon EC2 experience with open source software. Um, we have integrations with Red Hat and Mirantis and are working with the Ubuntu as well. Particularly for this case, quite often people will actually deploy with our optional vSwitch so we get some extra functionality that way, the, the integrated physical and virtual. Um, second big use case is VMware. Uh, and I'll be talking about this in some detail. So the idea is people are running ESX on this network, we've got some nice integration with that. Um, and last, you know, even if we don't have an integration, we can actually do, of course, just basic packet forwarding both at L2 and L3. Um, I'm actually not going to get super in detail about how the product works. We don't have the time. And also, frankly, we've covered it pretty well in network, uh, previous network field days. Um, we'll, we'll provide a, a link to the previous one. Uh, I will talk about some of the updates in the most recent version. Um, one of the cool use cases that people are starting to use this for is what I'm calling a, a virtual pod or a vPod. So generally, you know, there are people who deploy OpenStack. There are people who deploy you know, ESX. Usually, they're, they're completely different people. Usually, they're different physical deployments. You might even have people arguing over which specific version of OpenStack to deploy. It becomes a bit of a mess to have physical gear for each of these deployments. And so, what we're actually having customers do more and more often is have multiple ESX instances, multiple OpenStack instances in parallel on the same gear. In fact, um, what, one of our, our better customers is actually providing with what looks a lot like ESX as a service to people. So um, as a customer, you buy in a complete ESX instance. You get a bunch of physical machines associated with you. You get your own ESX instance, and all of the customers services run on a single big cloud fabric instance. And so uh, ditto if you're, if you're playing around with OpenStack and you can't decide which of the many distributions to use, or maybe you have different versions of the same distribution, um, you can run that on the same physical fabric. We have integration. And most of this is controller side integration. Um, but, but we have ways to make that work as well. Does this make sense? Does this, do people think this is useful? Cool. Um, we do a lot of work in OpenStack. Um, you know, we have a team of people who work on our Neutron plugin uh, that works with our Switch Lite, the, the, the VX edition, the, the, the vSwitch edition. Uh, we have a, an ML2 driver for, no, uh, for Neutron. Uh, we also support Nova networking, if that means anything to you. Um, we've got a, a great white paper that I talked about last time about our resiliency at scale. Um, we work with all the major OpenStack distributions. Uh, we've even got some extensions into the, the graphics interface horizon that we're starting to upstream. Even cooler that we've done with OpenStack, we started to do some of the bigger scale-out deployments of this, at least the, the Neutron deployments. So um, 
in partnership with Dell for the hardware and Mirantis for the OpenStack, um, we did a customer scale out design of uh, 300 nodes. Um, so you think of 300 compute nodes, that's a, a fair bit of computing power uh, running on a single OpenStack instance. So this was, um, we used Dell uh, R220s uh, for the servers. Um, we used the, the fuel installer. Um, there were five OpenStack controller nodes uh, and two big, uh, big cloud fabric controllers. Um, what does this look like from our graphic user interface? So if you remember, we've got these nice um, switch utilization numbers. These chunks here are the physical switches and the rest of these are the virtual switches. So this is the memory utilization across these switches. And then this is the CPU utilization across the same switches. Um, this is what I, I find cool, which is, you know, these numbers are, are rather large for, I mean, this is a, a 10 rack deployment of, of gear. Um, getting Neutron to scale out to this point uh, involved resolving a whole bunch of bottlenecks because people just hadn't done that yet. Uh, I won't bore you guys with the details, but if folks are interested, please uh, ask me again later. Anybody asking for uh, container networking integrations yet? Uh, yes, um, we actually have a demo of integration with Docker. We have a lib networking plugin. Sweet. Um, it's, to be honest, it's something in a beta standpoint right now, but, um, but it, it's in work. Um, we have integration with a bunch of different VMware style deployments, uh, but most of that, honestly, is really just we're integrating with ESX and VMware has a clean integration with the rest of their story for, for what's on top, uh, including with NSX and as well as VIO. Um, what does this look like? So if you are a vCenter admin and you click things like spin up this vSwitch here, create this VLAN here, uh, we have integration on our controller side that starts mirroring that configuration, does the equivalent of VLAN auto trunking and, and whatnot to, to move stuff around. Particularly if you move, if you do a VM move, we'll auto create the VLAN where it's going. We'll actually, if it's the last one of that type on that server, we'll actually prune the VLAN away, which is nice for security. You don't have all the VLANs everywhere. Um, new with 3.5, we've actually added a vCenter side GUI plugin. So you can actually drive large facets of our controller from the vCenter side. So what happens is the network admin creates a tenant for you, for you the vCenter admin, gives you a, a login credential, you install our vCenter side plugin, and then you can manage the logical router for your tenant. You can add routes, you can add service chains, you can add policy, you can add ACLs, you can create the equivalent of VLANs, and you can do that all from your happy uh, VMware GUI. Um, deploying th this thing is actually pretty quick and easy. Um, and you know, the, the interface is something that the server admins, at least, I'm not a server admin myself, uh, have come to know and love. Uh, with nice little drop downs for the, the tenant and you can uh, manage the, the routing access controls and things like that. Make sense? Other cool thing that we've done is vCenter has a whole bunch of information about some of the hosts in terms of host location, in terms of things like that. The physical network has some of that information as well. Uh, we've pulled all that together to, to actually create a, a unified view of these v, um, these VMs are connected to this vSwitch, which have these vNIC uplinks, which then connect to these physical nodes and into the, the, these physical switches into the network. This type of <coughs> diagram, like how many people have sat there with a pen and paper trying to, to put this information together and hoping you haven't gotten it wrong? Like, this, this, like when we talk about operational savings, we're talking about things like this. We'll get the MAC address and do a show up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll have some nasty hacky Perl script. Was that E6 or 6A? Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, vRealize is starting to, to have some pretty, uh, significant traction, so uh, we've done some work to, to add uh, vlog, uh, vRealize log insight. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple guy. I think of this like a syslog server. Um, and so basically what our plugin does, does some fancy parsing of the vRealize uh, information. So uh, things get annotated with host names and things like that. And it, it, it's, it's, it's an extra level of integration with our stuff w w with theirs. The VMware people love log insight. Yeah. <clears throat> Mainly because you can't afford to buy Splunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, and more to the point, you know, if you've bought Splunk, there are ways that we can integrate with you. Now, if you've bought this, we can integrate with you as well. Sure. 
I, I think things like this are kind of the, the mark of maturity where a product starts to go. Yeah, I was thinking. At least how I think about it. Uh, questions on any of these things before I move quickly on to the, the online trial? Anything that I've said sounded interest to you and you want to actually play with the products yourself, you can actually do so for free online. Uh, and so I'm going to talk about the uh, Big Switch Labs portal. Um, so in fact, I will just tab over to this. <coughs> When you go to labs at bigswitch.com, you will get a, please give me your name uh, and login. It sends off to us, we approve your account. You can log in and you get this screen. This screen lets you pick, do I want to learn about big cloud fabric or big monitoring fabric? You go through the list of modules and you say, you know what, I'm interested in learning about how the P plus V works or I'm interested in learning about how the integration works with OpenStack or I'm interested in how the automation works. There's even one with the analytics tools. There's one with vCenter. And you click a button to launch this. And so what happens when you launch it is in EC2, we spin up two, or one, sorry, real instance of our controller. It's our actual code. And we've got virtualized switches that work underneath it that, that emulate physical switches. And there are some little differences about the product uh, that result from that. But the, real, the reality is you actually get a, a real view of what our product does in practice. And you get put to a window that looks like this. You get a set of directions for what to do that gives you a guided view of stuff to, to think about and uh, to how to use the product. Or if you're like me, you can just click the hands-on button and go directly to, to mucking with it. And you get a nice view of this virtualized topology. Here, let me. So from here, this is our controller. I can right-click on this and get a window spun up of either the GUI, the CLI, or some information about it. So let me spin up the GUI. Because we're cheap on the website, we don't have SSL for the, um, the web spun up instances. But if you're willing to, to bear through it and click onto the secured service, uh, you can log in using the credentials that we send to you. Well, you have SSL, you just don't have signed certificates. Yeah. Yes, right. sorry. Of course, we have SSL, where we're too cheap to get the signed certificates for the dynamically created instances. Um, so, and then you end up at our landing page. I think this, does this look better with the, we'll do this one. All right, so uh, at our landing page, you can see that we have three spine switches, six leaf switches, and a whole bunch of virtual switches. This is that same visualization that I was looking at. You can look at the fabric view. Do, 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 do. A little bit of latency because this is actually hosted in EC2. Um, that gives you a physical view of what's going on. Um, if you click the show links button and you click a host, you can actually see what links happen. Uh, these are actually color coded. So if in this virtual world, if there was high traffic utilization, you would actually see this go from green to yellow to red. Um, if you click on I really wish I could see this better. If you click on the, the definition for a single switch, you get a nice graphical view of the switch, which will show up any second now. Come on, Amazon. Um, and this actually gets populated with all sorts of features of the switch. I can tell by looking at this that this is an emulated physical switch, a virtual switch, not an, a real physical switch, because with the real physical switches, we actually have the overlays from pictures we've taken to the point where the port layouts are correct, and you can tell whether it's a Dell switch or an Acton switch or something like that. Um, um, this also doesn't have any fans, a dead giveaway that it's not a real switch. Uh, but you know, we collect lots and lots of information about what's going on in the network. Uh, and, and try to make it look intuitive for folks. Um, <clears throat> we then have a, a logical view of the network. Um, so right now we're looking at, there's only a small number of tenants. We've got, the, we've got a blue tenant, we've got a red tenant, and they're connected through a communal system tenant. Uh, and so each of these are different tenants and you can do some things from here. And depending on the tenant, they actually have their own little private VLANs Effectively, L2 segments is really what they are, but they're like VLANs. Um, for a full description of what the, the product does, you know, please check out the, the, the Network Field A10, but at the same time, uh, 
you can actually play with all of these and understand what the product does in some detail by using the online labs, which is really what I'm trying to demo here. Questions, comments? Well, it's awesome. You know, within awesome. like two seconds, it spins up and it's, <coughs> yeah, it's great. That is really what we love, yeah? yeah. Somewhat uh, selfishly, we did an internal number for, um, if you imagine if everybody who used this product, if we then figured out the cost of what it would take to ship them out physical gear and how many pieces of gear we would have to have, this has saved us a lot of money. So in addition to being nice that you guys can poke through this on a lunch hour, um, turns out it's beneficial for us as well, yeah. so. Cool. I've used it a few times, to poke around in there. Uh, curious, which modules? Because there's now a bunch. I tried to get back in before I came, but I wasn't able to find the time. Uh, My bad, not yours. Yeah, um, so we've had uh, a number of big, uh, what I would say, semi-public wins, which is to say, I can't say the name, but lots and lots of people know about it. Uh, we had uh, one of the tier one US service providers, we got the, the design win for their NFE deployments, and so we're going into lots and lots of data centers worldwide. Um, so we're pretty happy with that. 